You're listening to Paint the Town Podcast with your hosts. LA Street Art Gallery resident artist, teacher, and founder of LA Street Art Gallery, James Chen of podcast episode 137 i like those uh treasure cats bro thanks man this is a little sculpture i made for the uh, for the wife's movie uh get lost um they're in pre-production right now actually and uh oh you know what they uh so they've got um ella travolta in the uh in the lead role which is a female um, oh yeah! Congratulations on that, man. Yeah, check out the uh, stencil. Awesome, Ella. awesome, man. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up. Uh, uh, wait, so so what? El Travolta, like, how did that all work out? Um, you know, the, we've been trying to make this movie for the past uh, <sighs> almost five years now, and uh, you know, they had a few other people. Um, that they've run it past and um i forget this one girl um in uh, over in london that uh they made the offer and they're negotiating with but then some problems came up and um the uh producer uh michael mendelson um happens to be uh in with uh, john travolta and he said that uh, john gave him a call and said hey i think my daughter might be interested in in doing this role and so they uh you know, sent her the script, and uh, luckily she liked it. And um, the wife went and met with them, and um, yeah, so they uh, they got her all signed up. And now they're working on the rest of the of the cast. Um, and I believe I think it's Edward Philip Hunnett. Um, I can't pronounce it. It's horrible. Sorry about that, um, Edward. But um, is gonna. Be, uh, the co-star and so they're slowly um, casting the rest of it and then uh, I think it's looking like um, June and July or July and August they're gonna shoot it in Budapest so um, that's gonna be interesting <laughs> um, but then uh, awesome you know, man I, can't wait to hear more about it as it comes I believe out. post-production will be back here in LA and um, you know, by the end of the of the year, we may have that have it ready. Um, Sweet. Hopefully, so we'll see. Awesome! Can't wait, man. Well, I I see our guest uh, in the waiting room, man, and uh, basically, uh, it's an artist who goes by Hung Hung Tran, and uh, he his Instagram is Hung Fine Art, and um, you know he's known for this uh, uh, beautiful kobe mural and in los angeles you know kobe means so much to us i like that it says hunksy right there too you, you know so yes uh, yeah so uh i'm gonna go ahead and let him in from the waiting room put on your red shoes and dance the blues To the song we're playing on the radio. Welcome, Hans. Can you see hear us okay? Yeah, I can I can see you okay. Awesome. I mean, I, and I we can hear very, you. I'm feeling very vain right now that I'm not pretty enough, but okay, let's see this. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Welcome <laughs> to the show, brother. We finally Thank got you. it. Finally got you on, man. We've been talking for a little while and uh, you know, we've been trying to find the right opportunity. And I felt like, you know, uh, this would be the perfect time, man. It's just been uh, uh, the one-year anniversary. And I, I think, like, uh, it's a nice time to kind of reflect on um, the whole Kobe thing and also just bring you on and kind of talk about your mural, too. So welcome to the show, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's the uh, first of its kind. And, you know, I've been – I told you, Kobe, like, six months ago that I wasn't ready for publicity, but I think I'm ready for it now. And, uh Yeah. Well, you've been getting a lot of publicity, I mean, just through that one mural, man. So, I mean, <laughs> you, you know, you can't, you got to be ready for these things. You, you know, I mean, like, you know, the world doesn't uh, uh, allow you to sometimes, sometimes when uh, we uncover some stuff, right? 
Yeah, Let's hurry I mean, up and wait. This, this, this mural has taken on a, a freaking life of its own. And uh, every, like today, I open up my Instagram and boom, there it is. Like last week, somebody from the UK was like, we, we, we we're doing an article on Kobe. We go to every school. And I mean, I met a girl in Paris was like, my boyfriend says, you're the artist. I don't believe him. I saw your art and Instagram in Paris. And I mean, that was a trip. I, I yeah, well, <laughs> it's like today. I mean, like last week I was uh, driving through Laguna because the Kobe, the Kobe changed my life like almost overnight. I mean, it, because I had this article written by Stu News. He's this, this, this article, yeah, that same, like, the Stu News article, and they were, like, comparing, you know, they, they, obviously, you know, okay, I originally did the Michael Jordan of with the Balloon Girl, okay, and yes. I did an Oceanside, and it's an Oceanside, and it became a cultural landmark for the, where the wall it's at, and, and uh, it's a frame shop that my buddy owns, and it's, like, a 25-foot wall, and when I was there the day when I found out Kobe died, I was, like, whoa dude kobe's dead i don't believe this i'm gonna i'm gonna do i'm gonna do kobe as jordan because everybody compares kobe and jordan like i always knew that comparison because kobe's was only like four years younger than me so i was like he was always you know somebody you always saw the lakers with kobe you know what i mean and then yeah uh, and i just said to myself I would drive through Laguna all the time and be like, I'm going to bomb that. I'd go, where would a, a killer piece of art go? And I would just saw on Crest Street this wall. And I, it's just a little, I don't know what I mean. It was, it was like, <laughs> you know, I decided I'm going to bomb this wall. And the guy, well, I had permission to do the Jordan, but I didn't have permission to do the Kobe. And, and if you, have you ever, guys ever visited the city of Laguna Beach at all? Yes, it's the, a very, very nice uh Conservative upscale, upscale place, yeah, yeah. I would say it's but, like, I would say it's like the Beverly Hills of OC almost, right? Yeah, yeah well, it, it was founded as a gay artist colony in the early 1900s, where all the Hollywood stars would come down from Hollywood to go and be gay without having you know getting shit. And so that, but <laughs> I mean, or getting shit literally. But but what happened was they started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I hate it. Nothing against uh, gay people are great. You know, whatever they want to do. But um, they used to hang the, on their white picket fences their art for sale, and that's how the heritage of the whole Laguna Beach thing happened with the art, like how the Sawdust Festival. There's a heritage from that, and it's funny that I will say that Laguna Beach is like I'm like a refugee from Vietnam, and I came here in 1975. And when I was like in kindergarten, my brother, he's two years older than me. He got, no, he, well, I think I was in first, no, I was in kindergarten. I remember because he, he got the Laguna Contemporary Museum of Art. It's like next to Las Brisas. And I remember driving my parents Pinto and, <laughs> see, and, and my parents, we went to the Laguna Canyon where like where Harrison Ford cracked and got that scar on his chin. And we went to this art gallery where they had all student art in it. And I remember it was my brother's art was in the stairwell and it always like like I, ever since i was a kid i was i mean i was always drawing and stuff and drawing all my brother's discarded drawings but that always like really really like stuck out of my head about laguna mm. and 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 so so i mean do you want to hear how i pulled it off or do you want to hear well well yeah 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 i mean are you, are you talking about the co changing the jordan into the kobe basically yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so sure. yeah. yeah sounds like so, a good story well, yeah, so I decided to be like, okay, um, I, I, I first I thought, well, what Kobe would did I want to do? And I and I was really partial to the Kobe, you know, the young Laker Kobe with like Rick Fox and Shaq and and that and, and, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, that young that buff, so I focused on the Kobe eight. Okay. That was my time, man. That, that was when I was like, actually, when I was in middle school, and I remember like watching Kobe as like a young rookie when he actually, he came out bald first, remember? He was completely out of bald head, right? You know what I mean? And later on, he started growing out his hair. And like I said, I felt like the longer his hair got, like the better he was getting, in my opinion. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he, <laughs> he you know, it, it's, uh, dude, yeah, Kobe, he did the Afro. I mean, like, I don't know, like, I'm kind of like a funny conspiracy theorist, and I kind of know, I, I kind of want to just focus on on the, the how I created, okay, 
So the Jordan, I was just like, dude, everybody always does this Kobe. Like Jordan even said, Kobe stole all my moves, dude. He's like the only guy I could beat because he like mimicked all my moves. And uh, and then I just thought, you know, I'm just going to, because I already did the, the Jordan jump, man. So I was like, dude, let's just do it. I'll just do it with Kobe. Yeah. And then... And then I, and then, but every, okay, so then Kobe died. I was sitting with this really beautiful girl and, and I opened up my browser on my, you know, iMac and I was just like, fuck, Kobe died. What the fuck? I was just like tripping, bald. I was like, whoa, Kobe's dead. And my mom lives out in Calabasas, exactly where he died. And it was just like, I mean, I texted wow. Nicole. Uh, yeah, I called my mom and, and my mom's like, really? I'm from like Vietnam. Like, like I came here when I was two, my dad was a captain in the Air Force and like, and they, they, they didn't really support the, or they, they supported my brother when we were little, but as we grew up and stuff, they, they, they were like, my mom didn't want me to do art. She would just be like, whatever, you know, I'd show her pictures growing up in elementary school. Where, and, where, where did you grow up? Uh, where did you move to when you first moved here to California? Okay, we, 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 we came to California by accident. My dad was a captain in the Air Force, and they're like, I right, saw we blew up your country, but we're freaking out of here. <laughs> And well, you can go home and get your entire bloodline and get them on a C-130 and we'll take them back to America, you know? And, yeah. And dude, like literally, and my, my grandpa was like, bro, we've been here, I'm dad, I mean, he's like, we've been here since the Chinese, the Mongolians, and the Koreans, and the French did, and now the American occupation's over. We're, not, you know, you're a captain in the Air Force and they'll, if you stay or get captured, I'm gonna end up raising your kids, dude. So you need to go wherever the white man tells you to go. So they told my dad, you. <laughs> I swear to God, it's a funny thing. I asked my dad, I'm like, how do we get here? He's like, they told me you could go to California, Texas, or Florida, because they figured the Vietnamese people were like acclimated for that kind of weather, you know, that trouble. Made the weather. right choice. Yes, no, but my dad picked Florida because he thought the panhandle looked like oh. Vietnam, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh my <laughs> God, dude, that's where I'm from. I'm from the panhandle of Florida. He fucked up with that. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, like the greatest thing, Kelly Slater came out on that, and the, sh the waves are shitty there, you know. But yes. no, but so, yeah. so my dad, my dad <laughs> gets on a, my dad gets on the wrong like plane, the, you know, like well, first we escaped like the night, the day that the war ended, my, my, the bombs were going off on the airport base. My mom was really smart and kept us on the, on the base, and my uh, my dad's entire squadron because my mom had the forethought that the, the war was ending because all the Americans were leaving and all the, they're taking all their mistresses and shit like off there. Well, so, so we, so we, my, my, my dad's commanding officer at five in the morning is like, go get your kids. Cause they're on the base and I'm just going to jack a plane and we're out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. And, yeah. True story on that one. And so my dad, my dad ran home and literally my brother, like we were running on the tarmac, like picture like LAX getting just fucking bombarded with like, rockets and shit and planes and jets and everything blowing up and people are just scrambling to get the hell out and my brother like vividly remembers seeing a dude fueling a plane and just was standing there and then suddenly he was blown to smithereens and i hit the colonel wow. was the colonel was my dad was carrying me under like under one arm and he's, i'm like was two my brother was, i just turned two and then my brother was one and my other brother was three and a half so he was able to run and he was just like being pulled like that, like the Mexican, like, like, you know, Mexican, oh, the sign, the sign yeah. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, I, I grew up in, 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 in South Orange County, dude, that signs everywhere at the beach. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, oh you, you basically, God, been... man, that's some hardcore shit, bro. Yeah. That's, you know, it's based on a true story, man. I don't wonder who's going to play <laughs> me in the future. You know what I mean? I'm, so <laughs> <laughs> I like that, man. And you know, yeah. I always want to just share this image of like, you know the hell the, the the people leave in vietnam and it was so crazy look at this line of people like you know people are just yeah, trying to that, get out of there the as, day. as fast that's as like possible probably, man. that that was the, the last oh like that was the, that was the God. embassy right there that's yeah. the embassy and that was like that's like real close to tunson air force base and they, now they call it like ho chi minh city and it was saigon i've been to vietnam a few times and like gone back just to be part of my roots and shit but like Dude, shit was live. Like, so the, my dad, we, we landed, we lived, we landed in the Philippines and then like they gave us those like Han Solo jackets, you know, those Arctic ones. And, and I, because I remember we had them when we came. And so we came, so we, my dad, they told my dad, they showed him a map and his English was, was good, but not great. And I mean, obviously you show somebody a map of Europe and say, where do you want to go in these three colored spots? You're going to be like, you know, oh my God. Just, yeah, literally that's what my dad did. So he, so he was Florida. supposed to go to Florida. Yeah, and woke up in Camp Pendleton, 
<laughs> That's San Diego for those of you who don't know. <laughs> you know it's like San Onofre, San Diego. It's like, it's like ocean, like before Oceanside and, and in between San Clemente and Oceanside. It was like yeah. And yeah, there's a the lot of enclave down there for and sure. It's such a yeah. better place than, than the panhandle of Florida. Like I said, dude, that's where I'm from. And I escaped. Yeah. Luckily, I yeah. escaped. You know? Well, I've been, you know, because, I mean, Florida and Vietnam have that muggy, you take a shower and you step outside and you're just still wet and <laughs> sticky again. Dude, I was just going to say, Florida is the Vietnam of the United States. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, and you, got, you got the Everglades and mosquitoes and crocodiles and alligators and free That's on the other with. end. Yeah. Oh, is yeah, it? One, I, yeah, the end where I am, up, I'm up on the panhandle. That's what you're talking about is down near like Miami and everything. And I actually drove across the Everglades one time. My, my car gave out and I had to hitchhike into Miami. Uh, ended up getting mosquitoes all over me when I went back to get my car. But, dude, now I'm from the panhandle, the other end, where there's a bunch of rednecks. Um, they call <laughs> it the Redneck Riviera. It's lower gotcha. Alabama. Um, gotcha. And it is, uh, oh, my goodness. It is like the Vietnam of uh, <laughs> so, Florida. Really. So I'm sorry, we digress. I, I kinda also, up... because we have open ports. You know what I mean? Yeah. The Gulf of Mexico, it opens up into the Atlantic and, and Destin. Um, which is basically where I'm from in the Panhandle. You've got the the Choctahatchee Bay, and there's the intercoastal waterway that goes into Choctahatchee Bay, which leads to so many private properties. Now, yeah, yeah, it's I like okay, you. what does that mean? Well, if you if you understand what the hell I'm talking about, if you got an international waterway that can lead up to a private property, basically well, that's, that's an that's open port. That's an open port you. of entry from wherever in the world. So you know all kinds of drugs and all kinds of crazy stuff in, in Destin when I was growing up. And so I'm lucky to uh, escape. And I'm so glad that you guys did not end up here because I guarantee you, we would not be on this Zoom meeting with you right now. And you would not be where you are, man. I'm so glad that you ended up in Pendleton. So, okay, so you ended up in Pendleton. Let's go from Pendleton. Okay, hold on. Let me uh, turn on the light here because I switched rooms because I want better lighting. Give me cool. a yeah. All right. Is this better lighting? All right, perfect. Yeah. Okay, I switched room. I mean... Hey, dude, this is one of the beauties We're getting of a studio to tour right now, too. Is that, you know, we get to move around. We get to do whatever we want, checking stuff out. Well, yeah, well, I'm really, okay, so I'm out in this, uh, I'm out in Palm Desert right now. Okay. I'm at a, now, the piece that you were carrying with you, that is yeah, a, well, that yeah, is a it's, it's Kobe. It's Kobe 24. It's got the Jordan is the drop shadow. Oh, wow. Dude, that's trippy. That's Actually, really trippy. I love what you did with the framing on that. I love how the, yeah, yeah, uh, the balloon, the love balloon goes outside the framing. Thank you for noticing that. I did that on purpose. Beautiful, man. I have, uh, and then if you, if you, here, like, I have stickers right here so you can see, but, like, so here's the Oh, we got to get some of those stickers. You got to get some oh, yeah, of those yeah. stickers, dude. So here's the Kobe nice. 24, but, it, it, but it, it is a, it's a definitely Banksy rip. I mean, it's got the balloon girl, and it's got the balloon, but this one, this one right here is, um, it's got oh. Gigi. It's, oh, it's his dog. You, can, you can see Gigi number two. I and love that one. Dude, I love both of them. But um, yeah, and it's I'm going like to pull up a better image of it right here, right here. So wow. we can pull the audience right yeah. here. Yeah, that's. Uh, Check this out right here. So yeah. Got the Gigi awesome. with the number two yeah. as the balloon girl, um, with the Kobe <laughs> floating up the balloon. Dude, right I also there. loved the the rip you did with the um, with the signature with Hunksy instead of Banksy, man. That's just you know that's Banksy. brilliant. Oh, okay, dude, this is the crazy part was that I've been called Hunksy for twenty five years. It was, it's a nickname. It was like my name is Hung Tran, and my friends would just call me What's up, Hunks? I mean, I'll actually <laughs> the, the, the band Pepper. Two members in the band would call me Hunksky all the time. And the, the whole, I'd have to be like, what's up, Hunksky? And I'm like, nothing. You know, just like Broski, Hunksky, Beerski, whatever, and Brewski. But like, um, I. And then whenever you had an art show, you were well hung, right? Yeah. Well, dude, I've, you know, like, we've grown up with the name Hung, and my brother's name is Long, and my little brother's name is Dong. <laughs> I swear, like his dong means sugar in Vietnamese. Long means, like I, I forget what long means. But I'm kind of like means dragon. And hung means warrior, but it's like hung long dong, dong hung long. I've heard that shit, and you know what it's like. It was like, it was like, well, my father left home when I was three. He didn't leave much for me except his guitar and this empty ball of booze. But I don't blame him that he ran and hit. But the meanest thing that he ever did was before he left to win Navy hung, 
And I had a fight my <laughs> whole life through, dude, for that name because when I grew up, that freaking was a cartoon called Hong Kong Fui, dude. And it was just like oh, yeah. kids that. would just be merciless, dude. Because I grew when we came, so we came here from Camp Pendleton and we got we got a spot like they were giving out sponsorships, like you're like a Somalian refugee or some shit. And like and so the first my mom was walking, they built a tent city in Camp Pendleton with like a hundred thousand Vietnamese in there. And the oh and gosh. so and so the United States was giving out money to people that would take in any Vietnamese refugees. And so oh, they wow. were like, yeah, true story. So, so what happened was my mom, my mom was like really, really beautiful. That super white skin. And she was like walking with us. I mean, I got, you know, my brother's almost four, I'm two and my brother's one. I should carry my brother. And this dude sees my mom and my mom was, is really beautiful. Like kind of the Singapore airlines, beautiful, like a classic Vietnamese, beautiful lady. And like this man was just like, Oh my gosh, I want to sponsor you. And, um, Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> no, like sponsor you, but my mom was like, I'm married, you know, I got a ring and I got these three kids, but he's like, okay. And this dude ended up living in Balboa Island Peninsula. And so we lived with this dude for like two months, my mom said, and my dad got a job as a janitor, like a janitor, but my dad had like an engineering degree and, uh, and, and he got a, so he was a janitor because, you know, when you first came come over you, you you'll take any job you know what i mean you can't speak english and shit so it's like sure. my dad was a, my dad was a janitor at this engineering firm and they, they were like he was mopping the floor and these people couldn't figure out how to fix their tool and die machine or something and my dad like walked over and fixed it like goodwill hunting shit and they were, like took the mop out of his hand and gave him a job <laughs> like right on the spot and he just <laughs> fast tracked him to speak out speak english okay and so so then we got we moved from Balboa to Santa Ana. I'm like my parents are like really hard workers, dude. They like worked their asses. Like it was like the full Vietnam American dream shit, you know. Like you know, like but but it wasn't really the. And dream, they already but... knew how to speak English before they got here, right? No, dude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Did. I'm obviously just. I'm yeah. obviously kidding. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. You know yeah. what's so funny? You kind of look like somebody I know. Oh, dude. You... Which one? Yeah, I don't look like. You look, like my, you look like my friend who runs karaoke, dude. And everybody tells me, thinks I'm him, dude. I, do we look alike? They're like, I'm like, dude, you give me a song, said, fuck you, dude. I don't run the show here, you know. But, and, then, and then, you know, it's like an Asian thing, because, like, we're the only two Asians there, you know? And it's like, <laughs> do I look like this, dude? Do I look like him? They're like, and then I'm like, who's older? Who looks better, you know? And they're like, you're younger. I'm just fucking with you. But that, that's true. You really look like this guy. I call him Glenn from The Walking Dead. You know, oh but. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you're Vietnamese. I'm, I'm, I'm Taiwan Chinese. Glenn from the Are you? Korean. You, you know what I mean? So we're actually all different things, but we're all, a, or you know, Asian, Oriental. You, you, you know. I know, I mean? but dude, do you, do people ever ask you what kind of Asian you are? Like, what kind of Asian oh, yeah, are yeah, you, yeah. dude? Yeah, you like, know, I, I, I get that. Dude. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I get that. You know what? The thing is, I like, never I, get that. I try not to. I try not. Some Asian people. Here's the thing about Asian people, man. A lot of because right now there is a lot of like uh, hate going on for um, Asian Americans. Actually, like random hate attacks going on, <clears throat> and it's oh because of the damn yeah because the COVID. I, mean, I don't know. It's sometimes ridiculous. it's just dude. like. I, they see like dude, an old Asian like uh, auntie, you know what I mean, picking up like cans or something like that, and then you'll see a guy just like basically push her over into the street, you know what I mean? I feel like it's just like a lot of times Asians are like known as like kind of like uh, a docile kind of like culture that we won't fight back a lot of times, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think uh, uh, go ahead, hunk. No, well, brother, I'm as tough as nails, man. Like, <laughs> like back to that Johnny Cash shit, like son the world's rough and he's got a man's got to be tough <laughs> i knew i wouldn't be there for you know you'd be tough or die and so like my knuckles have so many cuts on them from beating kids up because kids would be like hong kong food hong kong food i'm like dude pow but dude this is the funniest thing is i became the best drawer you know when you know kids they don't call you like artists when you're a kid they call right. you I have a, they say oh you're the best drawer so like i i got yeah. respect on them on the on the on the school playground jungle gym because I was the best draw and the fastest runner. Nice. What did you draw back then, man? What was the first thing uh, you remember drawing when you were a kid? Dude, okay, I just alluded to this like on my Instagram, like because like my it's funny because my Instagram I like write stories like when I was in kindergarten, dude, or like kindergarten. I remember my teacher came up to me and she she did that scene out of Pulp Fiction, you know, like like. Oh, you know, Butch, there's a man here to talk to you. And it's like, <laughs> this dad, this watch shit, you know, it's like, yeah, the hell, this, 
Un- yeah. Un- uncomfortable. Yeah, no, no. Like, you know that scene? He's got the Asian guy. He's like, oh, like, he's got the Eskimo talking. Like, ay, 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 ay. and then his butcher's like looking at the guy. And he's like, hi, I was in jail with your father. And your father had this watch. And then this is, you know, basically your father, your great grandfather came in World War One, and your grandfather came in World War Two, and, and then your father came in Vietnam. And, you know, we're not gonna get the gooks, get, you know, I carried his ass for five years and got dysentery, you know? And he was like, <laughs> he was like, and I'm like I've like, never heard that, that version, but that's awesome. Yeah, well, it was like, well, I mean, I was just like, you know, he, and then he wakes up and he's like, fuck, where's the fuck's my watch? Because he's in the boxing ring, whatever, you know? But that was like that elementary school, like, kinder, like kindergarten, the teacher looking at me going, come over here, Betsy, come over here. Look at this kid's art. This kid like paints like trees and birds and you know it's a tree and a bird. And I didn't think, and then she just crouched down like, like Christopher Walken's like, one day you're gonna be a real famous artist. God gave you this gift. And I always remember like, because I would hear it all as I grew up about the gift and, and that. That you know, right there, I'm sorry, just to interrupt for just a second. But that right there, um, is what made probably one of the things that made a big difference in your life, man. Because just because you still remember that at this yeah. age, to yeah. have a visual like that to make you believe, that's all the people need sometimes is to be able to believe. And that lady Dude. gave you a right to believe it. Dude, and that lady, I saw her when we came, my preschool teacher in Laguna. At where the dude, there's the same Mobile's gas station right there on Main Street where it tees off from Laguna Canyon. Dude, we were like leaving and we went to the gas station and this, we were in my parents' Pinto. I don't know if these people out there know what a Pinto is, but it, I'll pull one up. But <laughs> I do, the bro. Movie Top, <laughs> I know the, the movie I know Top the Secret. Is. They, they yeah. know, but like, remember the movie Top Secret gets ran and it blow like just ding and it blows up. Like, it's a cool design, but like, <laughs> um, but dude, my, my t- preschool teacher was in her Pinto. It was like, I remember it was root beer color and I was like waving at her and she waved at me and, and, and I mean, See, like Laguna has always been a huge thing because I grew. Okay, so we lived in. Um, my parents like worked real hard and bought a house. Why does the Pinto house? have to be blowing up on fire, Jim? Uh, that was <laughs> dude, a, that those are classics now. That's from Top those Secret, are... the movie. Basically, I just want to bring that up. Oh, okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, you go. You, Tell them to go but, on YouTube and watch the scene. Top but no, we do know. I'm saying, ever since a kid, I knew that Pinto's basically they have a they have a problem because they have the gas tank in the back or something like that. So if somebody like rammed you from the back, yeah, you fuck, yeah. fucking explode, yeah, but, but, right, Gong? <laughs> Was that what you're saying? Yes, yes. So I'd like to show off my cool Lana Del Rey oh, jacket. Dude. She's a, she's a real. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I. Uh, it's an exact replica. Well, I'm a big Michael Schumacher fan, and I collect Ferrari oh. jackets. And it's weird. I'm a Porsche guy, but I like. My, I think Lana copied this shit from me. <laughs> this, is, this is like a custom one. I mean, I could have. Okay, my my girlfriend ran a. God, I'm going to. I'm kind of funny because I go on a tangent. It's, it's okay, okay, man. We got time, man. Oh yeah. shit! Time. Oh, that's my girl. She totally fucking stole my steez, dude. Look at this one. <laughs> what? This is, I hope Lana, when you see this, it says. Hung Tran and Coca Cola font. Lana Del Rey oh. enjoys the real thing. <laughs> and she loves me. Nice. Uh, and on the bottom it says, I will not like fuck you up. Like, I'm a big fan of hers. And I've liked her ever since I saw her in Perez Hilton. But, anyways. Um, you know what? My favorite song uh, from her, she did this Sublime cover, man. I know, I know you like Sublime t- too. Uh, Bro, you know, you know, we can go into that. You know, I, I knew Bradley, dude. And I oh, smoked shit. two joints with him. And the, hence the name Hong Kong Fui. And, uh, <laughs> dude, no, no. I, you know, you know, I can joke. I met Sublime. I mean, I don't even want to date myself, dude, but I met no, Sublime. I love, we love Sublime, man. Dude, I'm older classic, than you are. Don't man. worry about it. I met Sublime. Okay, okay. I, Besides, you look way younger than you are anyway. Yeah, come on. You know Asian Doe Raisin, your... brother? Look you, at know, us. Yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> I, 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 look at this. I'm, I'm 51. I look like I'm 63. It's, dude, this guy it, looks like ridiculous. he's my older brother, man. I'm, I'm just... I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I would be saying, yeah, but then I heard when you turn 60, you fucking look like Yoda, dude. You know? Because you... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. No, okay, Sublime nowadays, Story. Nowadays, it happens until you're 80, though. You know, 80 is the new 60. Yeah, you know, my dad's still pretty freaking handsome. You, you know, he dyed his hair black, but he still he still looks good. You know, I... I dude. Okay, <laughs> so I started... Okay. When I was in high school, I started this surf company. I don't want to freaking name it because I don't want to give them props. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's a typical story. I did all these cre- – I was really into 
Robotech, dude, growing up, dude. Like, I was really, like, when Robotech hit, dude, it was just my steez, dude. I would draw Veritex all the time. I would just draw Veritex where teachers would come and just grab my fucking paper and crumple them in front of my face and shit, dude. I was just oh. like, fuck, damn it. Oh. But, like, but I loved Robotech and anime, dude. And then, like, hookups came out. And I worked at, I, I started this surf company out of the garage with my friends, dude. And I didn't think, like, you know, my friend would come back from Japan, uh, shaping boards and stuff and 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 i would design all these t-shirts and but my t-shirt was selling the tens of thousands and you know but you're a kid and you're not really thinking you're thinking you're in a band and you know eventually you're gonna figure out who owns what or or this or that you know and uh yeah after after like a while i was like this is this is a culmination with like the, the, the sublime sent in videos because back then you know you could only be famous if you were on k-rock or one of the the, the stations are on the radio or on a movie, you know? And so these guys were doing like VHS cassettes by the thousands. And so Sublime put the music in to this place. And my friends were the editors of that shit. That's how I got turned on to Sublime. I, wow. we were, I was in the Sublime, like, in the get, like, you know when like people like discover bands, like, bro, you gotta check out this new band kind of shit, you know? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, know didn't, what I mean? I'll, like, I'll admit, I didn't know Sublime until after Bradley died, man. You, you know what I mean? Like, okay, it, I, it, I, you know I mean? I'm not afraid to admit that, but yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. You, yeah, you like he did, dude. Yeah, so I met I met them. Put it this way, I met them when Date Rape just was it wasn't even on the radio, and that oh, was man. a song that K Rock like launched their launched them big, dude. And like, yep. And so what happened was I was super pissed off about like their Japanese team writer was telling me like how the dude that I, I like now I know why bands fucking break up or you know like egos like, oh, man wait. yeah it's his egos like like axles like that's just my fucking shit you're like wait we all own the trademark of guns are well you're fucking fired and fucking everybody give me the rights to that shit or oasis brothers or fucking you know like you know it, it's it's greedy it's it's a fucking funny thing and, and, and i look back on it even shaq and kobe bro i mean like you, you know i mean, they had to break up man because they were just too big for the team man but anyway kobe know how I, kobe know how to play <laughs> phil know how to play <laughs> the ball. I don't get, I My God, that's a good shack right there, dude. I mean, holy <laughs> shit. Kobe, I wanted $10 million and fucking fuck Kobe, you know, like, dude. No, <laughs> you know, it's ego, dude. It, 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 it's the dream. Yeah. You know? Back to Sublime. Yeah. So, so. Okay. So, so Sublime, this is the deal, though. So, so I was at Sublime. So, my, I was at this company and I had this friend who, was all in the videos and Bradley thought he owned the videos, dude. So he like drove down from Long Beach and, and, and try to meet him, dude. And so this dude was like surfing my couch. I like, just was like, bought this like little condominium. And I was like 22, 21, 22. Like my mom totally helped me, but like, nice. I, he was surfing my couch, dude. And like for a long time. And, and, and I just liked the guy a lot and like sublime and kidnapped him at ASR and brought him back. And, and I, after I had a big falling out with this company, I was like, fuck you, dude. I ain't wearing any of this fucking shit anymore. You know, like, fuck this. Like, you guys have half the fucking shit. You know, like, that's literally how I was. I was so, like, so when I get pissed off, I just burn shit, like, burn, like, fuck you. And we actually haven't been talking for, like, 20 plus years because I'm just fucking over it. Like, just, like, I, like, the, I didn't see the guy for, like, seven years. He, he comes up and he's like, my mom died of cancer. I was like, fuck you. Like, I was, like, about to throw my beer on him, dude. I was like. First words out of your mouth, like, how are you doing? No, my mom died. Again. You know why you said that shit? Because you fucking feel guilty that you wrote, you ripped me off. You know what I mean? That's but true. You know it is true, dude. Yeah. And it's, you know, man, people, people in the industry that are in that hood know that I freaking was like co-creator, co-conspirator of that whole shit. And, but, you know, hmm. but that's back to the sublime thing. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm in there when I borrowed 10 grand from the local weed dealer, dude, which I thought we started with Tanger. I'm sorry, fuck. Bleep that word. <laughs> okay. So, so the company was I will. bleep that word so people can't hear that word. So the company was started with 10 grand. My friend was like a trust fund kid. And uh, his dad died. His grandpa died choking on taco and left him a couple of mil. And he borrowed 10 grand and they used that money to buy t shirts and screen print them. And it was just a pie in the sky dream kind of time. You know what I mean? And it happened so young that I was like, man. Quicksilver, Billabong, you know, all these companies do their t-shirts the same way, dude. Like, they all started in the garage, too. So you start thinking, you know, you know, but this is, like, way before, like, the internet, dude, and way before, like, social media, dude. But you, 
but you, you I started it, my brain started clicking because I was like shampooing my hair and going dude I like helped think of this idea like shampooing my hair like oh, well that'd be like a cool concept you know what I mean and like after a while I was just like you know it's kind of promoting a negative vibe dude and I don't you know I'm not negative and I don't want to be promoting this mm. it was like a okay so so it's back to the sublime how sublime happened was I figured I'm gonna start a quick I was working at a snowboard company designing like snowboard graphics and stuff and snowboard mm -hmm. just was happening dude like it was, it was like the kurt cobain era 90s you know man. Like, every, everybody yeah. was wearing flannels and they just allowed <laughs> snowboarding they just allowed snowboarding on the mountains and people were like tripping on it like they're like you snowboarders or whatever like what is that shit? <laughs> <laughs> it was seen okay. as a less classy sport than skiing because you know, before yeah, skiing, like I mean, this rich, it, uh, you know, hoity-toity yeah. kind of activity, man, you know. And I remember those all times. Of sudden, all of a sudden, these, like, skateboarding type of guys, like, go up to the mountain and yeah, they're well, fucking was, up the vibe, like, you know what I mean? From longboarding to, like, shortboards and thrusters and shit, and, you know, and long hair. People were just tripping on that, you know. But so so yeah. my friend was surfing my couch, and I'm like, bro, where are you? I opened the door, and he's like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, bro, where you been? Because when someone's been surfing your couch, eating your food for a while, you're like, you, you notice when you have more food or the house is quiet or you used to play guitar all the time. <laughs> and so... Man, you're, like, a, you're a really nice dude for letting this guy... <laughs> he was a big... Influence. You know, he... Dude, the funniest thing about this guy was he, he was... He, he... I mean, his 15 minutes of fame was Bradley took pity on the guy and... Dude, okay, so this is the story. So he comes to my house. I open the door. I'm like, bro, where you been, dude? He's like, he's all tan and shit. And I was like, he's like, dude, you're not going to believe it. I was at ASR in San Diego, and I fucking ran into the Sublime, the whole crew. And they're like, what are you doing at ASR? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. What are you doing after? He's like, you're coming with us to Mexico. So he's like, I went down to Mexico to, to Rosarito with Sublime, right? So then that guy's back at my house, and I and then a little light bulb goes up in my head, and I just borrowed 10 grand from a local weed dealer. And I was like, Dude, to get Sublime to play a fucking show, and I started this snowboard brand. Like, really, it was a really, it, dude. Like, I could have sold it, but I, I, you're gonna edit this down, right? <laughs> no, nah, so, man. I mean, whatever no, you want dude, us to edit, stuff, it's all right? gold, though. I'm just saying. So, so this is the truth. So I borrowed ten grand from this weed dealer, and me and my little brother decided to set up shop. You know, we were just a full pie in the sky thing. But then literally what happened was I just had this genius idea. Like my brother brought 40 ounces of freedom home. Dude, he used to work at a CD listening bar. Like when you used to be able to buy CDs and shit. Like when, cause you know, you, you, you grew up with like eight tracks of cassettes, you know, to the mini disc players, the CDs, you know what I mean? And then the records like fell off the rec, you know, the thing. And then now that records are back. But so, so <laughs> I, so I freaking um, said, Hey chicken, can you call Sublime and see if they'll play a show for us, dude? And he's like, yeah, he's like, I, 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 I've been working at this snowboard company and they're about to sell it for fucking 10 million. The company's only like two years old. I'm like, fuck, I know how to draw. I'm doing all this shit for him behind the scenes. So fuck, I just come up with a killer label and fuck, let's do this shit. You know what I mean? Because I saw how I had done it with that surf brand, dude, you know? And so, and so, you know, and then what happened was he calls, he calls, he calls, sublime and he's like you know this is back when you had a landline to your wall like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know like dude like the, the the foot the motorola foot phone just like came out you know what i mean it was still <laughs> looked like a like a, a dish soap with a bar of soap in it you remember that you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's like he, he, i'm like call sublime and see if they'll fucking play a gig for us dude they'll fucking blow up our brand and you can just you know they'll wear it on stage and shit and like sublime was still playing like ucsb and shit they were but they seemed so huge at the no time. They, they seemed so huge at the time, right? Like, like, so he calls and Eric Wilson picks up the phone. He's like, and he's like, hey, what's up? It's Chico. He's like, he's like my friend. You know, he's getting fucking rolled up with his company. And he, and he, and he just borrowed money, a bunch of money. And he, he wants to know if you guys will play a show for him. And then and, and, and Eric, Eric's like the big bass guy who like yep. is, is sublime with Rome. And, um, and he's like, yeah, let me call you back. And freaking hangs up the phone, and uh, you know we're all sitting there on pins and needles, dude. It's like fucking pins and needles, fucking Ramones. I'm just like, fuck, you think he's gonna do it? We're all, you know, and you know, every every second seemed like an hour. Like Einstein says, like relativity, like sit with a hot chick. <laughs> Put your hand on a stove, and it fucking feels like an hour. You sit with a hot chick, it feels like a minute. You know what I mean? Mm. So we're just sitting there, going, you know, sitting there twiddling our thumbs, wondering what the fuck's going on. And then boom, the phone rang. It was like. Hey, he's like, yeah, you know, because he told him the stuff that backstory. He was like, yeah, my friend's like branching off because, like, 
Bradley didn't like the surf company. Like he wasn't down with the logo. Like he wouldn't wear it or nothing. You know what I mean? Because it like had a loser connotation to it. I'm like, I don't want to give away too many freak. I don't want to. I don't want to allude to this that that company, dude. But so no so he's like, what? No worries. No worries. Keep going. Okay. So 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 Brad. So Brad's like. So he's like, hey, fucking dude, Bradley says yes he likes the you know he you know he, what you told him about me and about what you're doing and then he's like but he wants to know what the name of the, the snowboard company is going to be and if you look on my go on my instagram you can see it just look yeah. for sublime he's wearing the freaking wife beater okay. on there gonna, and uh pull it up right now and i and i got that off dude and that dude when i saw that it made me cry like so what i did was I, I, I just thought, dude, I want to come up with a killer brand. I was working at the freaking YMCA, like hanging out with all these little groms, dude. And I, and I would, I was reading a, a freaking thesaurus, and I was asking the kids, like, man, I want to come up with a brand, another brand, another snowboard brand. And I, and I pull up the picture for, yeah. So like, you can see he's wearing the, he, he got that white beater off my back at the first show, dude. That's really cool. So I, I trademarked that, and it was like hustler snowboards, right? And it was mm. fucking. So we, but so he, Brad's like, I want to meet. He's like, hey, he, Brad's like, cool. He's down to do this shit. You guys need a fucking crew. He wants to meet you guys. So we're like, fuck yeah. So we hung up the phone. We all cheered like, what the fuck? You know, like what the fuck? And yeah, killer. It happened. So we already just had freshly printed, printed shit up. And then like, I'm like, go to the foot. I'm on stage right there. Go back. I'm on stage on the left. The bass player is right there on the big guy. I'm standing right behind him with that chick, dude. Like right. I got the baseball hat on. My little brother's to the right of Bradley. My brother like worships Brad, and so and um, it was, it was live, bro. I felt like that party happened in my in Dana Point Harbor, the Michael Supper Club, which is like the the Dana Point YMCA now or nice. Surf Club, and yeah, I'm dude, sure like some two thousand kids were there, man. Dude, what? two thousand fucking kids showed up, dude. It was the craziest Holy thing. Shit. I was like the most fucking. It was like sold out. It was the crazy. They played for like freaking five songs and destroyed the place. And the cops came and we uh -oh. went to this crazy after party. But no, no, let me tell you this freaking story though. So we, we drive up to Long Beach and I'm thinking like, you know, sublime. I got freaking 40 ounce of freedom and, and, and Robin the hood. And I'm thinking like, dude, these guys are like grant and you know, they're freaking platinum or some shit. You know, you're, you're 21 years old. You're not thinking like you just, you know, you're, I mean, I'm from the mean streets of Laguna de Gale, dude. So it's kind of an up to the up. <laughs> I was still, like, yeah, 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 keep going, keep going. Yeah, Camp Pendleton, mind you. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. well, you know, Camp Pendleton was started, and then all the houses in San Clemente were for all the officers, and then, you know, and then all the Marines came in, and then they, they gentrified it, and it became a million-dollar neighborhood, you know? And you know what beach. I love, man? I love that you, t you told the story about the Hong Kong Fui earlier, and then yeah. you were basically able to turn that around into, like, a totally yeah. positive thing. And work oh, with yeah, Sublime on that, man. Like, how yeah, crazy is that, scene. man? Go, go into that. You can see the spray can. And then you can see, like, I did the art in the back with the waves. So Bradley used to have a tattoo on his arm wow, like that with nice. all the garbage in it. So that's a very famous Japanese uh, painting that I kind of, like, Yeah, yeah, the wave. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Recognize look, that, sure. Heroin and needles. You can see Brad's guitar. You can see 40 ounces. <laughs> you can see bad fish in there. You can see, like, koi fish. And then you can man, see the wow. tears on the guy. Opie designed that, but I got his blessing to do it, you know? And I gave that, actually, the original piece to Troy, his widow. Mm, wow, man. Yeah, no, that, that, whole sub, that whole Sublime thing, dude, was like, dude, I mean, I'm fucking going to be 48 next month. And, dude, that was like 25 years ago. It seemed like the Beatles song, like, yesterday. <laughs> I was like such a dreamer. Dude. You know, like, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt my heart, like, when I heard the shit on the radio i wouldn't like I, I heard sublime like summertime i'd like change the channel you know because i'd be like oh fuck brad died fuck yeah that was great that was a real fucking experience you know what i mean and so yeah no it, it, it was a really difficult like you know like i've never touched any kind of drug like heroin because of, of seeing that you know me like, too man it. seriously seriously it's like, yeah, like see like <laughs> like i never you know to talk about okay it's really funny that they're trying to do this sublime documentary two years ago and that's where the lana del rey song comes in fuck, oh, okay. so you have know tied in this whole shit is yeah so i was like fuck yeah okay and i have the only live recording of santria on the planet like i have oh. it i've had it it's, it's 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 it is what it is it's shitty audio but it's but it's him singing it and nobody in the audience knew what the song it was and it was I, it was filmed like a month before he died yeah. and i actually had the i had the following i had the following 
I had him booked for the following Friday, dude, that he died. So it's oh, like man. really, yeah, you know, yeah. I made, and so like when Lana, like when I heard Lana's version, I was like, fuck, I love Lana. Whoa, what a trip. And they, and since, and since people knew that I had this footage, but I just sat on it and I was just like, dude, it's just bad memories, dude. But good memories with bad ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, woman, I can't have- yeah, and this woman approached me because there's Sublime's had this huge freaking like Sublime Wikipedia and this dude runs it from Sweden or some shit and me and this people just trade tapes and videos and stuff and and so like they wanted the footage of the last show where he OD'd at and then they, they wanted my footage because they knew that I, I had Santeria but I was like well dude they already have the VH1 story and they have and I'm mean, who's on this movie and shit and this lady was like this guy went to like you know Stanford freaking like movie won an Oscar and shit like for some rainforest movie. So I said, okay, there's some legit people behind it. And I said, who else is involved? I'm like, okay, no doubt it's going to be in. But then it ended up being sh- like, they, 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 they premiered at Tribeca and it just got panned. And so I've never even heard anything after that, you know? And Jeez. it's like, yeah. So, but back to Lana, Lana did that song and that was a trip. And um, yeah. So no. So we go to Long Beach and we drive to Belmont Shores and then we, hold on. Yeah, okay, so we go to Belmont Shores, and I'm sitting there going, where the fuck are we, dude? This place is so cracked out. This is, like, I'm scared, dude. Like, what the fuck? Like, dude, like, <laughs> yeah. like I'm like, everything's spray, was... everything spray painted black, and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I'm like, dude, we definitely are in the wrong fucking part of town, bro. Like, you're, like, you're, you're thinking, like, Beverly Hills, like, RC, you know, you're going to Tower Records, you know, Tower fucking, you know, some big studio, and we're just in the most gangsterous fucking like you know like you know you're in skid row of long beach and i'm like dude what the fuck and then like we knock on the door and the door opens and like it's like it's like bud the drummer and we walk in and it's like a freaking it's like a sublime video dude it's like you had the dog lou dog freaking eric had a big old fucking rottweiler but i remember looking to the left and seeing like a couple i mean a couple pounds of weed this is where you get like 10 years for having that kind of weed back then you know what yeah, i mean seriously. and they have like a full like silver 45 and shit dude and like you know you're just like kind of taken in and it's like the state where they shot their video they shot in that place all the walls are spray painted with sublime op was like painting shit on the walls i mean and then oh, i met brad like we came in we had a bunch of merch and we like shook their hands like hey what's up what's up i'm here i'm him and him and he's him and you know nice to meet you bro and, yeah we, we're down to do the show for you and at that time dude sublime was like two grand to pay so that was like that was like two grand of my 10 grand right there but i didn't you know, i wasn't a fiscally responsible kid at the time but we, oh, we, we but we made it up fucking at the door but it was it was like it was like that then that started and then that just snowballed we became friends and i told we i could go to any sublime show that in sun the cow up until he died dude and it was just it, you know i'm sure you can edit this for content but like dude that was one of those bradley influenced me so much like I was like I knew signs and you know, I know signs like he was like a Pisces he has the same birthday as like pretty much Bob Marley so he had that Bob Marley <laughs> that's why his music's all crazy like that you know hung and one more what one more because we're almost out of time man I want to get to one more influence before we <laughs> before we sign up because we're gonna have you on we again brother this, dude. We no we're gonna have you this. on again we're gonna have you on again brother because and, and in person too because yeah, like we, no, I'd rather do the in person one yeah dude. yeah. Like, no, we'll get you on. Uh, we'll no, get you dude, on. A lot is, of times, uh, you know, you know. I mean, but one more person still I want you. There's lots to cover here. Yeah, one more no, person I want you to stuff. go into, man, because this person is very important to me too, man. Okay. In your profile, man, you list yourself as Bruce Lee's bastard son, man. Okay, and yeah. Bruce Lee to me is like such an important person, man. And to me, it's because Bro, like, <clears throat> go ahead. If you even knew what I'm working on, like, dude, think about if I just like Bruce Lee is like my fucking like spirit fucking dad dude like you know <laughs> that's the reason i call him my my Ill, i'm his illegitimate kid dude because it's yeah. like you know it's funny when people ask me what my name is in public because it's kind of weird like i draw I, I so people ask me what's your name bruce oh it's nice to meet you bruce bruce lee bruce and they'll shake my hand and like fuck bruce lee what the fuck and i'm like no nah, i'm just kidding my name is Jack Chan, and they're like, "What the fuck?" And then I'm like, "No, my name is Jack." D. I just have the same. I do it all the time, you know. But but Bruce Lee is a huge influence on me. He, if you, I used to have him painted on my surfboard from like like Enter the Dragon, and and I'm actually doing 
like Bruce Lee art. That's like, the, it's on my, like, I have a list of like to do's and, and Bruce Lee is going to be, he's going to be tackled because nobody's ever really, like everybody always does the Bruce Lee, like, whoa, you know, and the, 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 the you know, they just they always do the same Bruce Lee the airbrush that you can buy at the freaking swap meet, you know, but dude, my yeah. shit's <laughs> next level. Like picture Kobe and Jordan of like, just mm. re, like remixing things. But yeah. like, Bruce Lee is obviously a very iconic character. You know, uh, the, he would, I believe he was murdered. He was murdered because he was, because he kicked that, he, when he was a kid, his dad was a very famous movie star over in China and his mom was a singer. And Bruce used to get, you know, he was a shitty student and he, he basically beat up a, a, a kid of like a freaking triad, dude. So his dad was like, we need to put you on a boat and get you to San Francisco and go stay with your aunt, dude. You know what I mean? And while Bruce was there, dude, he would get in fights. So he started training with the dude, the, the Saipan, you know, the, the IP man, dude. And what happened was, you know, you know the story. Like, Bruce was the Green Hornet. And then he became, you know, he was a breakout star of the Green Hornet. And then, you know, they wanted to give him the Cato show, but he was just too Asian. And then they, he wrote Kung Fu, dude. With the, and then they were like, you're just too Asian, dude. The people aren't ready for you. So they put David Carradine in there. You know, you know that story? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. They put a yeah. white dude as the, the Kung Fu guy, dude. I was very yeah. confused. I was very dude, you know, man, I'm, I was saying to myself, man, it's time to do some deep fake Bruce Lee shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wait, I just, you know what? I just, I just typed in uh, Bruce Lee murder because I want to pull up some of the details. And I actually just found a really interesting thing. Did you know that Roman Polanski actually thought that Bruce Lee murdered Sharon Tate at the time because they found really? a pair of horn rim glasses um, in the area? So that's so fun. I never knew about this actually until now. You know what dude, I mean? Bruce Lee, okay, dude. I'm, I've done my sleuthing on this shit. He, he basically got taken out like Princess Diana, dude. Like, Bruce Lee became the biggest box office draw. Like, okay, so he goes to Hollywood. He tries to make it and and uh it just gets lambasted you know like they he, but he has a vision and, and dude he and the, the power of because bruce lee's a huge influence he wrote himself a check for millions of dollars saying i'm gonna be the next big freaking martial arts superstar and make million highest paid and you know be like water be like a you know superstar success and this is the trash dream. if you look at bruce lee's <laughs> funeral pictures bro you see him in the coffin dude with freaking just his face okay bruce lee was murdered by the the, the 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 chinese mafia because he was only getting thirty thousand dollars he was only getting thirty thousand dollars per movie at the time and they were making dude 50 million dollars i mean you got it just for inflation dude this guy was getting fucked you know and he he wasn't having it i mean fuck bruce was fucking bruce dude you know and um and what happened was he was having an affair with one of his co-stars was a really famous Chinese actress. You can pull her up too. Okay. Up. And this is where the shit gets juicy, dude. She, she, he was having an affair. Linda Lee knew and just like, you know, just turn a blind eye to it, but he was having this like affair with her. And she's the one that <clears throat> she was the one that, um, that he, that he was found dead in her apartment. Okay. And this is what happened, dude. Mind you now, Bruce Lee liked to smoke weed because he 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 ruptured his back working out, and so he, he uh, with would smoke weed. System. Yeah, to, and then this. So when they found, you know, that stupid like the gateway, like who, who did this? You did. You taught me how to do. It. Well, Bruce Lee was freaking smoking weed, and they said that he took a pill and fucking an Ambien and fucking died in his brain hemorrhage. Well, nobody's ever died of smoking weed ever. Period. I don't know. <laughs> You know, That's true, but, and but at the time, it, weed was like, oh, yeah, you, you yeah, know yeah. I mean? it was yeah. just like mar marijuana is bad, is bad. You know, it's <laughs> like it was a cannabis. It's just like Mexi, like yo, know, the like reefer madness, like sublime. You just you know they're raping white women, blaming on the you know Randall Hearst and Dupont. But so what happened was she she yeah. drugged Bruce Lee, dude. She was forced by the mafia to drug Bruce Lee. And there, there's a reason why in his in his funeral he he, he doesn't he has an open casket, but he just only shows his face. Well, he was she freaking pretty much poisoned him with a drink, and it caused his fingers and his feet to turn blue. Mm. 
you know what I'm saying? That's how they find out if you've been poisoned. You know, I, I, I never, I never oh. knew that uh, she was the one that actually poisoned him, man. That's yeah, like, and dude, oh. first of all, another thing is, it's like Princess Diana. The hospital was only like a few buildings over. It was like you could freaking carry the dude, you know, with a bunch of like, I got Bruce Lee here. Fuck, let's carry the front of the more the fucking hospital. They didn't freaking do that. Secondly, dude, the mafia in China, dude, has a has a has a rule, dude. They can't kill nuns, dude. So that lady, after that, she dropped off being a Hollywood actress and became a nun. Oh. Ooh. Okay. So, so what about Brandon? Keep yourself man? safe. Is there is there a conspiracy there? Yes. What's that? Brandon Lee, his son, man, the crow. Oh. You, you know what I mean? Is there? Yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah, they, they brand I, I, I brand, dude. There's even one with Bradley, dude. Go back on that, dude. On my sublime thing, and go to the last page, and then. Well, well you know, know what? We're gonna spend the last okay. next. Okay. Next okay. Talking about Bruce Lee. Okay. So Brandon Lee, dude, yeah. the crow. You know what happened was they say it was an accident, but you know they they say it's a curse of the dude. Like Bruce Lee, if you research Bruce Lee and how he became the dragon, was he was born in the year of the dragon, and like. You know, you're Asian, dude. Like, parents don't buy a fucking house unless the numbers align and the stars and the moon. For sure, dude. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't, they don't buy a house where the front door opens and you can the see the back. The got to be correct, right? Yeah, so, yeah, obviously there is, like, you know, we are an eternity and it's just a game of musical chairs and, you know, and it's like, you know, like, say you're a Kennedy, but back in, like, King Arthur's day, you killed a bunch of people. Well, and then this year you got blasted driving down Texas on freaking the school box, school book, the tough box. But I mean, in a weird way, I'm, I'm spiritual like that. But yeah, you, Brandon Lee, what are the odds that somebody has a prop gun and somehow a bullet goes like the tip of a bullet? It's a prop gun, but the tip of a bullet is actually in the barrel and somebody puts a blank in it and the pressure of the gun shoots and kills the guy. Yeah, you know I know. Yeah, it's very highly suspicious, man. It's like, what the fuck? And I mean, it wide up for conspiracy theories. <laughs> so, dude, we're gonna have you on again. And like I said, I know you send me a lot, a lot of videos, and I try to keep up with them, man. You, you know what I mean? But we can't keep I, up. So we gotta I, spend another episode, like just going over all this stuff, hung. You, you know, I mean, would you be down for that, man? Oh, I, I'd love. You know, I'd love to be on the show. I feel like David Chow Cho right now, dude. I feel oh, like. Oh, dude, I love it. You have that energy, bro, and I love it, dude. <laughs> oh no, no, this is this, this is a sober me, actually. Actually, I'm sober. I uh, quit drinking. I quit. I've quit partying, and I decided. I decided to focus on my art a hundred percent. Like nice. three years ago, three years ago, I had an epiphany, and I'm like, like James Dean's birthday was yesterday. If you look through my art. I mean, I have a replica of his jacket. I'm buying his Porsche. Like, once I have my big art show and sell out, I'm going to buy a 550. But, like, dude, you know, <laughs> dude, I, have, I was on a tangent. Oh, Bruce Lee loved James Dean, too. Did you know that? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I didn't know that. I saw Dragon. Dude, okay. I was going somewhere with this. Sorry. Talk no, to we're, me. We're, talk we're, we're basically just talking about <clears> – <throat> We were basically just talking about, uh, you know, Bruce Lee, and then I don't know how James Dean oh. came up. It's his birthday, basically. You oh, know. yeah. <laughs> well, okay, Bruce Lee said, you know, and any man, you know, any greatness of a man who is in great will be immortal. And mm. Bruce Lee's immortal. And, That's you know, even true. Brandon Lee came in on that. And James Dean said, you know, if you do everything in your power to find your dreams, you know, you know, then and you remembered long after you're dead, then maybe you truly were a, good, a, a great man, you know, and mm. and it's funny that, OK, I'll end it like this about art. You know, I just wrote that, you know, ever since I was a kid, people tell you you're famous or whatever. And then you have the people tell you, you, you know, like you're not going to be famous until you're dead. Well, you know, I think like that. I think like, you know, it's called the art, artist paper trail. And mm. as much art as you produce before you're dead. That's your legacy on earth. Mm, you can yeah. see that now. Powerful. Yeah. The, yeah, but I don't want, I want to go out like Banks, back to Banksy. I've, I've had, I've met, I have a few friends that know him. Um, I actually, you know, I, he, he's, he's aware. I apparently I've told that, you know, he, he's aware of my parodies of him, you know, and then, but awesome. he, 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 my friend, my friend met him through Kid Rock. And he came over to his house with like 30 bodyguards or 30 men that put up all his stuff because he's a production. I think he's a yeah. production. Dude. And he, oh, yeah. and he, I know. And he, had, he had two armed guards 
And my friend let 30 men sleep over his house. And he was like, I guess he even said he said he didn't even let Banksy sleep with his wife. I mean, I was like, fuck, <laughs> but uh but but dude, babe, babe, you know what it is? That whole exit to the gift shop thing, like I have a new piece coming out. And it and, and you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. The whole reason I I did what I did with Banksy, because he's a big influence. Everybody likes Banksy, but I in a weird way. I riffed him because he's the greatest, like, or the goat mm -hmm. of the of the art world now. And he, you know, him doing the shredder. If you see my parody of the shredded soup can, is a homage to him. Sure. You know, I thought to myself, make fun of the biggest dude. In the, not make fun of, him, pay homage to the biggest dude in the business. Then you're gonna be compared to him in some backhanded or some funny way. So that clever, sense? man. No, I I love it because it, the piece we're looking at here. And we're gonna, we're gonna close with this piece, man. I mean, it's uh, you know, the Banksy. He had the shredder at the art auction, and it's actually Ninja Turtles in a soup can, uh, being shredded. But while the top in the frame is shredder, and there's a little red balloon, uh, in the corner that says "I want you, man." So it's just such a cool, uh, take on, on the Banksy piece, man. And like I said, man, we're gonna have to have you on again to talk about because because very I, clever. You know, we gotta have with you at least like a couple hours just so we. Don't have to bounce around on topics. And well, stuff. There's, there's a lot more to uncover here. <laughs> you know what, man? You just seen the tip of the iceberg, bro. Yeah, scratch so, the surface, bro. Hell yeah. Bro. For now, I, can I, you uh, I tell, uh, tell you... people the easiest way to reach you, uh, your Instagram, your website or whatever? Can you toss yeah, those I, up for us? My website is under construction, but it'll be up and running. I just did a deal with a, a company called Shark Wheels where they're licensing my artwork. They're like the largest skateboard. They make these funky wheels. They look yep. like blocks. They're called Shark Wheels. I've seen those. Cool. Yeah, they've been, they were on Shark Tank. They are the, they, they, they're the number one vendor for penny skateboards, and they sell at Walmart. They're the number one selling skateboard wheel there. And mm -hmm. um, they, awesome, they, they're they doing a limited edition run of skateboards of mine with my artwork and print, like two two boards, one complete, one to hang on the wall, and one. And um, so be, tell on everybody the for, That's good. Tell everybody be on the lookout for that. My Instagram, have give me a follow, please, at Hung Fine Art. Yeah, follow and, this guy, uh, man. Hung Fine Art on Instagram, man. We're going to promote the shit out of this guy. And we're going to have you on again, brother. Don't worry. You, you, know, hey, I mean, like, you know what? You brother from another mother that kind of looks like a brother. And you got that Asian white skin, you know? <laughs> You'd be blessed with that, man. A lot of Asian families must like you. But uh, <laughs> who's, your, who's your partner in crime there? Partner in crime. Teacher, yeah, definitely. Hey, please, thank you for having me on. That was a real... Uh, Real uh, 15 minutes of fame, Andy Warhol. And, like I said, uh, we'll have you on again, brother. And I can't wait to riff with you about some conspiracies. All right, dude? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, my friend from Pepper is like, we got to have you on with drunken, freaking drunken, drunken, like drunken talk, whatever. But yes, I no, it was a pleasure. We know that you're, uh, that you're Bring him next now. time, man. And, Bring him uh, next time. <laughs> whatever. Uh, we'll take you however we can get you. Doesn't need to be anything or whatever. We just enjoy your company, man. Hey, Hell you yeah. know what? It's been a real honor, and, and, and I, I've, I've looked forward to it. And it was funny. I, I was like, I knew I had some shit to do today. And I stayed <laughs> off and I stayed off in the social media all day. And uh, and then I kind of, and then I looked at my emails, and it was like, hey, 8.30. And I was at dinner at 7.30, and I was like, you know, and I was like, you know what? I think I can pull it, uh, do a Han Solo crash landing in this thing. <laughs> so oh, <laughs> so yeah, I did. Man. Thank you so much, brother. And like I said, we'll have you on again soon, man. So uh, follow us at the TP Show. Leave us a review. And uh, follow Hung at Hung Fine Art. All right? Take care, guys. Love you guys. Take care and peace. Peace. Thank you again. Take care. Thanks again, bro. Appreciate it. Talk soon, brother. Peace.